Hi everybody, this is Kent from Man About Tools, and in today's episode I'm going to show you how I built this small woodshed. I built this woodshed a couple of years ago, and I posted a picture of it on Pinterest, and it turns out it was one of the most popular pins that I had. So I thought I'd use SketchUp Pro to do some animation and a drawing to show you how I put it all together. But before I do that, I'm going to empty all the wood out to transfer it over to my other woodshed closer to the house for winter. And as I didn't have a drawing before building this shed, it would be easier to take all the measurements when it's empty. When I built this, I was using whatever full dimension milled lumber I had on hand, and some leftover roofing metal from other projects. And when empty, I think I'll make a few minor modifications. I'll have the drawing available for download, and I'll specify standard framing lumber sizes. And I'll also provide a cut list and hardware list on my website. This shed is over in the corner of our property and acts as extra or overflow firewood storage. It's more work to move and restack to my larger woodshed beside our house, but having wood kept us close to the wood stove makes life in the winter much easier. So it's only a few days I have to spend every summer to move it. This shed is freestanding and up on concrete blocks to make it plumb and level. I don't have to bend down as much either. And having the wood up off the ground helps with drying and air circulation. This shed has no back wall, then I can load it from either side. Now with the shed empty, I can take all the measurements and begin creating the model. For this video, I'll build the model, create the animations, and make a fully dimensioned drawing using SketchUp Pro. I haven't done a video like this before, where I show step by step how I create a 3D model and subsequent drawing and animation. I'll move fairly quickly through this, as many of the steps are repetitive. And I hope you'll get something out of it, or at least an appreciation of the work involved. For the model, I'll use nominal 2x6 and 1x6 framing lumber. The shed sits on six concrete blocks, or can be secured to poured footings with post saddles. Over the blocks are floor joists, topped with deck boards. There's two outside walls and a middle dividing wall creating two firewood storage bays. Then, two floor braces around the back and four rafters with blocking. Connecting the walls and rafters are four 1x6s and front corner braces. Fascia boards complete the overhangs, and the shed is topped with strapping boards and a metal roof. In the next episode, I'll show you how I made that animation sequence. So, with my sketches and notes at hand, I can sit down at my computer and get to work on this. I began by modeling the 2x6 floor, then added the four vertical 2x6s that make up the wall on the right side. I rotated a dashed grid line to represent the slope of the roof line. Where this grid line touches the face of the vertical 2x6s, I can draw a line on each face, then erase or cut off the top section. In SketchUp, I use the push-pull command to do this. Now I'll take a cross member from the floor and move it up the wall. This will add strength to the wall by sharing the horizontal load of the stacked firewood. And I can pull the end out to make it the correct length. And I forgot to copy this piece when I first moved it up, but I can quickly fix that by putting a copy back. Then I had to shorten it. And this happens as you're modeling. It's not always a clean step forward as you go along. Mistakes are made, and sometimes you have to backtrack and fix things. Now from around the back of the shed, I'll add construction or grid lines to start modeling a 45 degree floor brace. Then I'll rotate this grid line. Then with a pen tool, I can make a closed face from point to point to create one side of the brace. Then push pull that to thickness. After I pull the face, I can key in the desired thickness. Here the thickness is 1.5 inches. And paint it the same color as the rest of the parts. As I work on each of the parts, I try to stay organized by putting each into an appropriate layer. And these are rough groupings at the beginning. I'll add more and more layers and become more specific as I go along. This will help with the drawing and animation that comes later. 
Now I'll select the four vertical 2x6s and copy them over to the other end of the shed, and specify to add an additional copy halfway, and this will make up the interior wall. I decided the rear brace was too low, so I slid it up where the underside intersected the bottom edge of the wall connector. I'll add some grid lines to trim the end of the rear brace. Sometimes I need to temporarily hide a part from view, if it's in the way of an operation or task I want to complete, as in the case of that rearmost vertical 2x6. The low end of this brace needs to be extended to reach the bottom of the floor. And this is the beauty of 3D modeling in my mind. To attach the middle wall to the floor, I need to add some 2x6 pieces between the joists. I'll draw a rectangle on the face of the middle joist, then push-pull it out to reach the front joist. And I'll duplicate that piece and move the new copy into place on the other side of the wall. I'll create a 1x6 on the top of the right wall, and I'll first add some grid lines. Then trace a line around the intersecting points to make a face, then push-pull that to thicken it. And I'll create a layer for the rafters and move it there. I'll then make this 1x8 longer by extending the front and rear faces along the grid line. Here the distance I keyed in was 14 inches. For the rear overhang, it's 13 inches. And I can make copies of it to the top of the interior and left wall. I'll add some 2x6 blocks to connect the 1x6s on the interior wall. I drag a grid line off the edge of the board in the direction I need, then key in the exact distance. Here it's the thickness of the 2x6 block I'll use, which is 5.5 inches. You can see those values I key in down at the bottom right of the screen. As I make new faces and push-pull them into objects, I will group all the geometry together. Ultimately, each unique part of this project will become a component, and all the subsequent copies of each component are linked. If I change one component, then those changes will be reflected in all the other copies. Another way to make an item unique, and on its own, is to simply group the geometry together. In the beginning, I often use groups as I'm modeling. If this group will be made into many more copies, I can then convert it into a component. Components will become more important when I use a SketchUp plugin to generate a cut list. Then I can add a fascia board that connects the middle wall to the right wall. Here the thickness is 0.75, or 3 quarters of an inch. I'll lengthen this board, then copy it over to the left side of the shed. Then copy both of those to the rear of the rafters. And to finish this overhang, I'll copy each outside rafter to the end of the fascia boards. I'll add more blocking to the top of the interior wall. This will support the 1x6s that connect the frontmost vertical 2x6. The copied 1x6 will be trimmed to length. Then move down to be flush. The vertical cross brace is copied from the right wall over to the left, along with a rotated copy of the rear brace. I know there's a mirror command in SketchUp, but I don't use it very much. So in this case, I just rotated, then translated. Now I'll create a floorboard.
Then copy it over from the right wall to the interior wall and tell SketchUp to fill in that span with six additional equally spaced pieces. Then I can select all of these and copy them over to the left bay of the shed. Then I decided I wanted the connecting 1x6 at the top of the forwardmost vertical 2x6 to sit flush, so I needed to make a notch in the 2x6 to achieve this. And here is another case where I'll need to hide a board to modify the one behind it. I just have to remember to unhide after. I would need to adjust the blocking as well. I do have these screen captures playing back at double speed. I'm not really that fast at this. And I've cut out a ton of time where I was rotating the view of the model around. I do that to have a good look at my progress and to be sure I'm happy before I move on. And I do that while I'm just thinking or trying to decide what I want to do next. And I'll copy the left side vertical 2x6 with the notch over to the right side. And I did that so I could make a front upper corner brace that would sit flat against a vertical and horizontal face. I can copy and rotate a 1x6 45 degrees. Then position it. And from time to time I use the measuring tape tool to quickly check distances. I did that a few times on the rear braces as well. I'm thinking of how many pieces I can get from standard board lengths as I'm working on the model. Well, trying to anyways. And something was a bit off, so I had to work it back into place. Again, this is how it goes when modeling. The brace needed to be moved back so it would be flush to the other faces. As I need to draw lines at the intersection points, the boards need to be touching. Then trim it to shape. I liked how that looked, so I can copy it, rotate it, reposition it, and then move it over to the other side of the shed. For the roof strapping, I'll first create a rectangle that is sitting flush across the rafters. Those last two grid lines I created at a zero offset from the edges, so they would be placed right along the edge. Then I'll slide that up to be flush with the front plane of the roof. And I'll pull that out to the proper length. Then I decided to increase the overhang on the sides, so I moved the outermost 1x6 and extended the length of the connecting boards. And I can repeat those steps on the right side of the shed. I'll copy the first roof strapping board to the rear edge of the shed roof. And I needed to make some adjustments so everything was flush. And I'll fill in the space with more strapping boards. I was trying to space them so the boards would sit over the wall below. I'll model some concrete blocks to support the floor.
For the metal roof, I'll draw a rectangle by connecting the four corners of the roof strapping. Then push-pull this face the overall thickness of the roof. And I can make a small overhang by push-pull on each edge. Two inches on the front and back, and one inch on the sides. Metal roof panels come in various widths depending on the shape and supplier you go with. For the purposes of this 3D model, I just made it as one big sheet. Last of all, I decided to make the front and rear fascia one long board instead of two. So I can delete one of them and pull the existing one out to the other side. I think that looks pretty good. I'd say the model is done. In the next episode, I'll move on to creating the drawing, generating a cut list, and the animation. And that's coming up right away. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, just post them below. We'll see you next time.